Yo, what is up YouTube? James back here and welcome back to another episode of EDC 17 Back to Battles. Obviously you can tell um, a few things a bit different. Uh, should I just uh, webcam? I'm thinking... I think that's fine for now. But obviously you can tell I am not in my usual house because I would have had a green screen. But I'm actually in my college dorm room right now and I finally got some time to record. My roommate's out. Hopefully, um, I'll be able to finish this recording before he gets back, but let's just get straight into it. I have been gone. I did prepare right after Worlds. Obviously, I did compete at Worlds. Didn't do so well, unfortunately. Luck was not on my side. I went 3-3 three, three, uh, after losing on stream, which kind of stinks because I actually really didn't want to go on stream like early. As we find Blackleaf from the United States with 1533 rating. Uh, my rating reset because I used my other 3DS to test like some battle spot stuff for worlds. But anyway, our opponent has a team of Ninetales, Incineroar, Driftblim, Zergatry, Tapabulu, and Gyarados. So, Grassy Seed on Driftblim it looks like? Huh, that's interesting. I've never seen that one before. Uh, we also have our team, which is Baruto's t uh first place Japanese Nationals team and he ended up winning Worlds too so that man is a legend but we have the Pelipper, Golduck, Serena, Tapu Koko, Metagross, and Garchomp. If my voice quality does seem different this room is a lot different acoustics here in here plus the fact that there's a lot of people outside um it's move-in day for most people I got here like two days earlier so uh I don't know how that's gonna work but okay so how do I want to handle this matchup I really do like Pelipper, Golduck, and Metagross. Those Pokemon do seem very solid in this matchup. I actually do want to lead Pelipper, Golduck, I think, because uh, if my opponent leads Ninetales, I get the rain up, and I think I want Golduck just as a lead, just to outspeed everything, if possible. I think I want to go Tapu Koko in the back, because Tapu Koko is faster than Ninetales and can, you know, do some things. And I think I want to go Metagross in the back, because it is a Blizzard switch in. It also is a switch into Tapu Bulu. So I'm going to go with these four Pokemon. Obviously, I'm not using the in-game music until I figure out the correct settings for it, because normally I actually just record the game with my microphone. But uh, I can't really do that here, so I'm gonna put some probably some background music. Pro you're probably listening to it right now, and you can always check out that music in the description down below. So I do lead my Pelipper Golduck against Ninetales Incineroar, which is actually very, very convenient for me actually because one, my opponent did lead Ninetales as Ninetales is hail is gonna go up the drizzle is gonna activate and with the rain up my opponent can no longer go for something such as a um can no longer go for something such as an aurora bell turn one which is really good uh i feel like Ninetales would want to switch out here but i think i could just get a free hurricane off into that Ninetales slot and yeah, my opponent doesn't exactly have a good Hurricane slash War type move switch in. So Hurricane, I think, is smart for the Gyarados or Tapu Bulu that might be coming in. And I think I'm just going to go for a Scald into Incineroar the first turn as Ninetales is going to withdraw. So no matter who Incineroar goes for Fake Out, oh, Zerkertry is actually coming out, which is a bit interesting of a decision because I'm not exactly sure if Zerkertry would have been the best mod. But we're going to see the Fake Out on the Pelipper, which is great because I do get the Knockout onto my opponent's Incineroar. However, this situation has gone a bit downhill just because now Ninetales gets a free switch in, and Aurora Bell most likely will be set up here. So that's not exactly the most ideal turn. But Ganymede of Incineroar is pretty nice because it was basically the one thing other than the Zergatry that really, really drives my Metagross. So Ninetales is going to come out. I'm pretty sure it's just going to go for the Aurora Veil, and I don't know what I can exactly do against it. I think I can just go hard into my... I actually think maybe pulling a double switch is a good play because of the fact that Roarville is so obvious coming here. I actually think I might want to retreat because I don't... If he Thunderbolts the Golduck slot... Well, I am powering up a Thunderbolt. Mm. I don't have Volt Switch either because I thought I could Volt Switch out. Um... I definitely need Pelipper to switch out. I think I'm going to go into Metagross and... I think I'm just going to protect Golduck because I'm running out of time. I would have liked to think about that turn a bit more, but it's not exactly going to happen. So we're going to retreat 
our Pelipper. We need to rain up for Golduck later. So I'm going to bring out my Metagross here and protect Golduck. Ideally, he goes for Thunderbolt plus Aurora Veil, but I could see Tail Glow coming out. Blizzard actually, so no Aurora. That's actually amazing. That is actually amazing. As Blizzard's going to come out, do nothing. I'm surprised there was no Freeze Dryer or anything. Thunderbolt into the Metagross slot, which is a very solid play for my opponent. But as often as Metagross is going to be able to eat that up as the Hail... It's going to take down. It actually reveals that my Golduck is actually faster than that Zerkertree out of um, Hail, which was so good to confirm because I'm not exactly sure about the speed stats. I know that um, obviously if you watch top 8 at the Pokemon World Championship, it was between Sam and Sabos, and the fact that Sam, Zerkertree, Outspread, Golduck out of Rain was so huge in that match. But right here, I think I could just go out into my Pelipper. And just click Hydro Vortex. I don't see a reason not to. A Nine Tails is most likely going to switch out, but I think that's completely fine for me because if I give it a Zerker Tree, that's a huge threat out of the way. As we are going to see the retreat into Gyarados, which I do not mind at all, as I'm going to get Pelipper in, which means yes, my opponent most likely does get one more chance to set Aurora Veil. But if I can knock out the Zerker Tree, or the fact even if he protects, it should be in range of Hydro Vort Hydro Pump. Or I could just Encore after. So either way, we are in a very solid spot here. As let's see what this Zerker Tree is going to do this turn. If it doesn't protect, Golduck should just outspeed. Doesn't out... My opponent doesn't protect, and I will be able to get off the Hydro Vortex. And now I'll be able to knock out the Zerker Tree. And this is basically what I want to confirm. I really want to confirm the speed. Uh, luckily, my opponent is up a Roar Veil. I'm not sure why Blizzard, though. Um... I mean, a Thunderbolt was very a very free play. Maybe just trying to cover a Scarf Garchomp switching. I guess that was my opponent's thought process. Because let's say I did have Scarf Garchomp in the back and brought it out on the switching, and he went for the Blizzard. Wouldn't have been able to knock up the Scarf Garchomp. And if he didn't go for Blizzard, uh, Garchomp would have had a very solid position against my opponent's team. So I guess I kind of understand it. Although I'm not exactly sure if it was like the best thing my opponent could have done there. As my opponent is going to reveal the nine tails in the back and now he's trapped i could switch out again but i don't feel like that's really necessary here i feel like i could just try to break the sash on nine tails with the sculpt uh potentially it is sash and i go for tailwind because it, if my opponent goes for freeze drive i still have metagross in the back i have tabu coco in the back as well for the gyarados so I do want to try a Tailwind up if he cannot knock out my Pelipper in time, which is exactly what I want to do here. I definitely want to try to pick up the knockout on Ninetales, as my opponent is going to go for an Aurora Veil, which is perfect. I could always Encore that move in the following turn, too. So, going to be able to get a Scald off into this Ninetales, which is going to do a very small amount thanks to that. Um, thanks to that... What's it called? <laughs> Thanks to that Aurora Veil and Tailwind does set up as the Gyarados does go for Dragon Dance, uh, which is completely fine because with Tailwind up, I will be able to outspeed this uh, Gyarados. However, things could get a bit scary, I guess. Okay, I Encore the Gyarados right here. The problem is, if he is Zemu Gyarados, which is most likely Zemu Gyarados, I would assume from the team. Could be Zemu uh, Zergatry though, but Gyarados usually likes to carry the Zemu as well. So I think the best play is actually to risk Tapu Koko here and go for the Encore in the Gyarados to prevent it from being able to protect next turn, which means I can knock it out with Thunderbolt. The only way this goes negatively is a Blizzard Crit or Freeze Dry Crit Freeze or Icy Wind potentially on that Nine Tails. Icy Wind is probably the most likely, but I could see just my opponent going for a Blizzard here as I do go for the Encore into that Gyarados. So Gyarados will be locked into the Encore and the only thing it can do is Dragon Dance or go for a Z move the following turn. And that's if it survives the Electric Terrain Boost attack if I don't get knocked out. Uh, it is just going to be the Blizzard. Hopefully it doesn't freeze me because that would be really, really bad. Nice, okay. <laughs> I almost thought my opponent would have gotten the freeze, and that could have been very, very bad, but we do prevail for that turn. Actually, wait, did the. Okay, I don't know. I thought I saw Gyarados take the hail turn last. Oh, wait, it did, it did, because of the fact that it's probably still under Tailwind. Okay, so we can just fund about the Gyarados, and I will just go for a. 
I guess it doesn't matter since Metagross literally seals it up in the back. So I'm going to double up the Gyarados in case it can randomly live. Like, maybe it's a random walking berry and it can live the Electric Terrain Boosted Thunderbolt. Well, it is Moss Life Orb. So, but I feel like Scald would have finished off if it is like one of those random weird sets. But we do take that game very nice, very convincingly. I haven't exactly had the time to play Pokemon much. I actually wasn't able to test much for World. So it's nice to see that I still have it. But again, we are on the lower ladder. So we probably won't be playing some high rated opponents for quite a bit. Also, the fact that I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to do stuff. Like, I still don't know how I'm going to, you know, like stream. I really do want to stream. I really do. Oh, great. I'm stuck on the... Oh, wait. It doesn't matter. Music doesn't matter since I'm playing my own music. But, um... Oh, I know this team. This was, um... This was a team I did use in the past. I do love this team so much, though. That team was so much fun. And I think, um... Should be an interesting battle. As we have the Milotic, Marak, Kartana, uh, Celesteela, Crocodile, and Tapu Koko. So, this is definitely going to be interesting... Wasn't that Scarf Coco too, if I remember correctly? So, if it is Scarf Coco, that's actually going to be a very hard, very hard matchup to play against. I don't exactly know what's good in this matchup. I think top, I think I go like Garchomp Tapu Coco as a lead, and have Rain in the back because I feel like Rain could set up, but I don't feel like my opponent should let me set up with Rain early in the bat. So I think Coco plus Garchomp is actually just fine as a lead here with rain in the back. Metagross isn't really necessary in this game. Near Serena. Serena does hit two Pokemon for, well, three Pokemon for super effective. It also can take a hit from Tapu Koko, but I just don't see me using really Serena at all. Maybe a faint would be nice, but I definitely want my rain matchup. I do want Tapu Koko for like Pokemon such as the Celesteela, because I'm not sure if you bring Marok in this matchup. It's a bit tricky. If you bring Marok in this matchup, you're more susceptible to Rain. But I could definitely see like uh, my opponent leading like Coco Cartana, which is a very standard lead against Rain. And I could just go for like a Dazzling Gleam Fire Fang turn one to pick up the knockout onto that a Cartana slot, which would be really solid for me. As let's see, my opponent is going to lead Tapu Coco Cartana, so I will be able to go for just a Fire Fang and a Dazzling Gleam, I think. Is there a reason for me not to? Uh, do I run Fire Fang? I guess is the question. Because I actually should double check. No, I have Flamethrower. Okay, Flamethrower is fine. Uh, yeah, I can just go for Dazzling Gleam here, which will do a lot to Tapu Koko. And. Just Flamethrower to Kartana, I guess. I think it was Scarf Coco, but this isn't the QR code version, so my opponent could have made some adjustments. But I will Flamethrower to Kartana, because no matter what. My opponent's taking a heavy slot there. Even sell so, Seal switches in. The only thing I could really take it on would be like a special defensive. It is Scarf on the Coco. We do confirm it. Volt Switch is going to come out onto my top of Coco. Gets a crit, which is actually kind of annoying because that might put me in. That's going to put me in range of a probably Thunderbolt or Scarf Dazzling Gleam in the late game. So that is a bit <laughs> annoying. Uh, let's see. I do get the knock on Cartana though, since my opponent didn't protect. And it can't be Scarf Cartana, as Marowak is going to come out. Which is weird, because if I just went for Earthquake, you were screwed anyway. As we do go for the Flamethrower here, we'll be able to knock out the Kartana. Uh, or if it, you know, with Sash, it will survive. But Dazzling Gleam will be able to finish that off. And Kartana is a huge threat, because now my opponent doesn't have a... Where's your rain switching? Like, show me your rain switching. I don't see one. I really don't see one. So, very solid turn. Very solid first turn here. As... Hmm. Ooh, Celesteel is going to come in. Interesting. Okay, I would not have brought Celesteel in. I would have brought Tapu Koko because you know that the worst thing the Garchomp could do is Flamethrower. And you could have just put pressure on to, like, discharge, can't catch my rain switching because I don't think... You know that I'm Scarf Garchomp. I also play Kartana. Unless you're, like, really still Kartana, but I kind of doubt it. So, very interesting. I don't know how my opponent's playing, but I feel like I'll go for a double switch here. Yeah, I'll just double switch here. Like, I have no reason not to double switch, to be honest. My opponent's late giving me a free opportunity to get this double switch off. And now I pin him down with, like, water attacks. My opponent doesn't have a resist on the team. And once I get rid of Marok, I just win with my Tapu Koko, I feel like. So, let's see. Uh, my opponent could double out here, which I could see. But I'm pretty sure you're just going to go for, like, 
Shadow Bone. Maybe you go for Substitute here. I could see Substitute coming out here. Because the Marek did carry Substitute. But my opponent actually wasted on a Protect. Oh, that's so not good for my opponent. Leech Seed's going to come out too onto Pelipper. Which, you know, it's going to break my Sash. But I would have definitely capitalized off there. I'm not sure. I really don't understand like the plays my opponent's been making. Uh, you already saw that my Garchomp was able to outspeed my Tapu Koko number one. And the Celestia. Uh, the Kartana turn one, so you knew it was Scarf. I I couldn't Earthquake. Tapu Koko couldn't really touch Marak unless I had like random HP Ground or HP Water. So really don't understand the place my opponent has been making. But I'll just go for a Hydro Vortex. Do I have to go for Hydro Vortex? I don't have to, but I feel like what can Cell Steel do? It, Seed Bomb's like the worst potential, or maybe HP Electric. But either way, I get to knock out on something as Celesteel is going to protect right here. Completely fine. As I will go from my Hydro Vortex here. And I'll be able to knock out the Marowak. And right here, Tapu Koko is looking so good in this endgame. Like, it really is. The fact that Tapu Koko is looking so good in this endgame. And the fact that it's Scarf, it has to lock itself into move. It might have Discharge, but it has to Discharge his own Celesteel, which is very problematic for my opponent. So I don't think my opponent exactly has a way to win this game. As Hydro Vortex will be able to knock out the Marowak, I'll be able to Tailwind. I didn't need to go for like a Brine. Hydro Vortex catches the Marowak slot. Even if Celesteel switches out, like it doesn't have any effect on the game. And Tailwind allows my Golduck to now be able to outspeed the Tapu Koko. Which is why I kind of thought you might want it want to have gone into Tapu Koko instead of Celesteel, like that pin would have been so crucial, like you would have been being able to pin me with like a Shadow Bone Discharge combination, but now, uh, the game's pretty much, I, I don't want to say over, but it really does look over, you have to discharge yourself here, if you want a double knockout, if, if you Thunderbolt, I get the KO anyway, because two Skulls will be in finish off Tapu Koko, and if you Thunderbolt the Pelipper slot, Golda can just go for another Scald once again. My Tapu Koko is literally looking to clean up in this endgame. As I will be able to Scald. I don't want to risk Hydro Pump even though I could knock out the Tapu Koko with that Hydro Pump. I just don't want to risk it. As we do see the Thunderbolt into the Pelipper. So that means this Tapu Koko is going down to a double Scald. And I have Tapu Koko in the back. Which will be able to finish off the Celesteela with the combination of a Thunderbolt plus Scald from my Pelipper. So no matter what I just don't really understand my opponent's play double dc too um i guess maybe trying to pin the switch but either way like this game's actually over we have tapu koko in the back uh you don't know how many turns of electric terrain so maybe you could stall that out but this is modest life orb coco plus pelipper in the rain we have actually we have one turn of electric terrain left but i don't think i even need to risk anything i just click scald plus thunderbolt and that should be able to knock out celestila yeah, my opponent doesn't even try to protect. Like, I think you have to... I guess a uh, way you could have potentially won was protect, get the berry back. But even if that happens, like, I could just sack Garchomp. Like, I really didn't need Garchomp at all. Then bring out my Tapu Koko. My Tapu Koko should definitely be able to guarantee the knockout on Celesteela. Uh, because I would never let Celesteela be able to get the beast boost. So no matter what, I still think that was a game that my opponent just couldn't win. I feel like the big turn was, like, switching... The like switch okay i feel like the biggest turn in general actually there were a bunch of questionable plays um one was the volt switch in the top of coco because i guess you don't expect top of coco to protect but even then like what if i just earthquake then that's where my yeah he's sash too he wasn't even bloomed him so you couldn't knock on my guard time and win it that rid that Turn one really confused me because if I just protect Earthquake, like Tapu Koko would have been gone. He would have been in such a bad position. Uh, it was just very questionable. I feel like how my opponent handled that game. But we're gonna go for our last opponent uh, from Italy. I thought it was a German name for a second. It might be a German name with an interesting team: Tapu Fini, Crocodile, uh, Gudra, Togemaru, Pelipper, and Scizor. So my opponent's team. I feel like. Um, uh, the Crocodile has been rising usage lately ever since it won was. And I think it's a very solid Pokemon. The fact you're able to um, fa have Intimidate 
on Crocodile is amazing. You get, it's a fast taunt user as well. It's actually a pretty underrated Pokemon, and I feel like I love the fact that I just love the teams that Snow and Baruta brought to the World Championship because I feel like they were very clever for the time period. And speaking of World Team, I'll actually be showcasing mine on the channel. I'll also be writing a report, so look forward to that. Uh, even though it wasn't really a great team, I feel like it had potential. It had potential. I mean, I didn't think it was going to win Worlds. I just wanted a day one team, to be honest. And it was something I came up with last the night before Worlds. So I feel like it was okay. I feel like I just, the games I played with it and won, like the first three rounds, uh, showcase how strong the team could be. But anyway, uh, let's see. I think I want to go, I think I want to go Metagross Tapu Koko, actually. With Golduck, Pelipper in the back. Like, I was thinking about maybe Serena. Serena could have done very strong work in this game. Because of the fact that Serena would have been able to uh, handle the Togedon Maru. Does pretty well against Crocodile and Tapu Fini as well. However, I didn't want exactly one Pelipper. Does seem a bit scary with the Hurricane. As we're going to see Gujra Tapu Fini. I expect a Gujra to lead because of the fact that I have rain. So, uh... Pretty solid assumption right here because now I get to bring out my Metagross and Metagross is looking for some big strong damage turn one and this is a, this is a moment where I feel like if I had Earthquake I would definitely click Earthquake. Wait 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 that scarf that scarf Fini Misty Surge activated before Electric Surge. Ooh it's scarf. I, I wonder if it's a scarf soak variant which would make a lot of sense here. Uh, my opponent. Does have a switch into Crocodile? Ooh, there's so many options for my opponent. I could definitely see Crocodile though. Okay, so Scarfini is a bit interesting here. I just want to medium match protect because I want to scout. I feel like it's the safest play here because I think Crocodile might be coming out. Token Amaru, okay, that's fine. So I could have got free Dazzling Gleam off there, but unfortunately I am not much of a man. So I go for the protect here. I want to go for Gleam so bad there. Sludge Bomb is going to come out. Uh, which made sense and Meteor Mash. Yes, it does connect. Thank you Man, Earthquake would have been so good. Like imagine if I had Earthquake here I was gonna protect Earthquake and look at what Earthquake would have done uh, <laughs> Earthquake would have been able to blow away this token tomorrow Really would have been able to so Sludge Bomb's coming out Okay, so I feel like Fake Out's gonna go into Metagross and we're gonna see another Sludge Bomb. I definitely do wanna keep my. I wanna keep Coco alive because it's like the only thing I have against Feeny, really. So. I think I just wanna Bullet Punch. Well, I'm probably gonna get Faked Out with Metagross anyway, so I wanna Bullet Punch in case it doesn't activate like the Barry on Gujra. It could be Barry Gujra, which I could definitely see on this team. But we're definitely going to retreat Tapu Koko here and go into Pelipper. I might not be playing this end game so well though. This end game might be a bit tricky. As we do get the Drizzle up. As Fake Out is going to come out and target down my Metagross, which it should. And Sludge Bomb should be coming out once again. Oh, Flamethrower actually. So, ooh, I get to keep my Sash. That's actually very solid. Very solid. No burn? Thank you. Okay, that was actually a very solid turn. Uh, I guess, well, yeah, Pelipper was a very safe play. The fact I could bring rain for that flamethrower just in case. But maybe the Daz. Well, I guess either way, I'm in a good position. I can just protect here and hammer arm the Totem Marsock because I don't want to deal with like Zing Zap, number one, flinching my Pelipper. As. Oh. I forgot it gets faint. I forgot it gets faint. That's bad. Well, actually, actually, I don't think I had another play because even if I predicted the faint, <laughs> I actually forgot that Gujo gets faint for a second there. But, like, I don't think it really matters too much. It's not Sash Token tomorrow. Okay, maybe this is... Okay, this has gone very interesting. Very, very interestingly. I'm going to go on the top of Coco here. Scissor's going to come out. Okay. So I want to bring out my Tapu Coco here because if the Tapu Fini came in, that would have been a bit problematic, but... Okay. I 
think I just want to meteor mash to Gudra here because Gudra is a bit annoying. I'm guessing maybe could be double faint to be honest. But the fact I need Tapu Koko to take as little damage as possible because of the fact that I am in range of a rain boost in muddy water from that Scarfini. I'm definitely in range for a one of those. And I could see like faint thunderbolt coming out from the sizzle. Well, faint sludge bomb coming out from the scissor. I just need to be able to take a few hits with my. I just need to take a few hits. I can also see the scissor going for SD. I'm guessing right now. I'm hoping that the Gudra isn't Barry. I think that's my one hope. Is hoping it's the assault breast variant, which is very common on Gudra. So I wouldn't be surprised if it is. But I think that's my only hope here. I can't play around a Barry Gudra now, as we will get Golduck in. I kind of wish I did go with uh, Golduck earlier. As the Sludge Bomb does come out, doesn't really do too much. As we do see Sword Stance, which makes a lot of sense here. However, we're in a very solid position now. If we connect, yes, okay. Crossing my fingers, hope for good luck. As the okay, it's not Barry. Oh, that's so good for me right now because right here I'll be able to bullet punch the Guja and just go for the Hydro Vortex into that Scizor. I'll be able to pin my opponent down here because of the fact that Scizor has to either protect or um, I guess maybe last ditch bullet punch or switch out because of the fact that Scizor can't really take too many hits. But if he switches out, I think Fiend is gonna take a lot. It's Scarf, it's not bulky because it outspeeds my top Pukoko and that takes a decent amount of investment. So I feel like this is a very good spot here. This is a turn definitely can decide the game here. As Bullet Punch will be on Naka Gudra, it also gets the chip damage on Fini, which is very nice. Um, for Golduck. Oh, we're not seeing. Oh, oh, are you Sash? Like, that's the only way I see you potentially beating me. Gudra goes down. Hydro Vortex. I guess we come down to are you Sash? Or maybe he doesn't have Protect. I could definitely see like a Scissor not carrying Protect either, to be honest. Because of the fact there are so many moves that are can run. U-Turn, uh, Bullet Punch, Faint, Sword Stance, um, Thief sometimes, depending on the set. Maybe it's like the Misty Seed variant. I could definitely see one of those. Although it's kind of weird to like just not see uh, Scizor with Protect because Arcanine is the most common for Pokemon in the format. We do get rid of my opponent's... Oh man, we're in a very solid position here. Tapu Fini is locked into a move right here. Misty Surge is going to activate on the battlefield. Rain should be going down a few turns, so unless he has Hydro Pump or he crits a Moonblast or something, he won't be able to knock me out. Uh, how many turns of Rain are left too? This is the last turn of Rain too, which is excellent for me because I don't think he has a move that can knock out Metagross. Maybe Hydro Pump crit, maybe. But I just go for Scald here into Tapu Fini and try to weaken it with my Meteor Mash here. Because we do get the Scald off. This should do about 15, 20, yeah. As Muddy Water, okay. Uh, unless, I think he has to go for Accuracy Drops uh, in the future. But luckily that won't be able to knock out Metagross with a crit. As, okay, Metagross is not blind today. We get the Meteor Mash off. Very nice, very nice. Uh, a Bullet Punch. I think two Bullet Punches will actually be able to knock out the Fini. I don't think one will. We'll see here. I'm going to Bullet Punch, and I'm just going to protect my Golduck. Because worst case scenario is he gets a Muddy Water Crits to knock out my Metagross, and then, um, well, he double Muddy Water Crits here, and is able to knock out both my Pokemon. Although, no matter what, what he needs is just, like, multiple Muddy Water Crits in a row. That's what I feel like, if he lives to Bullet Punch first. Uh, then he could potentially win, or maybe an accuracy drop or two. But we do get the bullet punch off, and that will just be able to knock out the top of Fini, and that will be game. So we are able to pick up three episodes on my comeback to VGC 17 Backflip Battles. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, sorry if like the mic quality isn't what you used to, or you heard like background noises or something. This is a college campus. The dorm rooms are really, really small. Like maybe I'll tour my room later if you people want to see it, but. It is really small, but anyway, hope that everyone enjoyed. I will be trying to make videos. I haven't started class yet, but I'm still hoping to make videos daily because I would just like to continue videos. I had so many nice conversations at Worlds. A lot of people asked me for like pictures and autographs. I think this was like the World Championship where at, or the, mo the event that I signed the most things and took the most photos with. I think I signed like 
30 plus playmats and at least 10 Pokemon cards. And one of you people came up to me with a Piplup card to sign. And if you people don't know, Piplup is one of my favorite Pokemon, so I love that. But, um, yeah, and also even, like, during the, even after, like, outside the venue, outside the event, even when I was going, like, a place for dinner, I ran into, like, some people and you people told me how great um, these videos were for you and how you really enjoyed them and asked me to sign stuff and it was just amazing thank you everyone for your support and I definitely uh, hope to continue my Pokemon run while I'm here in college I will be trying to attend future regionals such as Connecticut and uh, Florida we'll see how that goes though I don't know how I'm gonna travel really I think I need to hook up some rides or something but yeah, thank you everyone for tuning in, and this will definitely not be the last VGC 70 Back to Battles you will see. So, see you around in another video.